Hi, my name is Zach Plunkett with AtlasRFIDStore.com. Today we're going to get started reading and writing with the TSL 1128 UHF RFID reader. The TSL 1128 is a sled reader, meaning that it needs to be connected to a smart device in order to read and write tags. When you receive your TSL 1128 reader, you will notice that it comes with several components. UHF RFID reader unit, a trigger handle, battery, battery charger, and, depending on your selection, a 1D laser, a 2D imager, or no scan engine at all. In this case, I have a 2D imager. Unlike fixed readers, this sled reader is easy to get up and running thanks to all the apps on the App Store created by TSL. First, take the battery out of its slot and pick up the reader unit. Open the battery cover and slide the battery in with the printed side facing down. Then close the battery cover. Pick up the trigger handle and slide it onto the reader unit until you hear it click. Then take your imager unit, if you selected one, and slide it on the front until it clicks as well. When you squeeze the trigger handle, you should hear a small beep and the unit should display a green light on one side and a blue flashing light on the other side indicating it turned on. The reader is now ready to be used. Apps are available for all major mobile operating systems, iOS, Android, and Windows. On your smart device, navigate to its app store. TSL makes several different apps depending on what you will be doing with your RFID reader. But the app with the most general abilities, like reading and writing, reading inventory, and the tag finder, is called RFID Explorer. Download RFID Explorer and open the app to get started. When the app opens, you will notice there are several different options on the screen. Tap to select a reader, change reader, and disconnect reader. Below are the commands, inventory, read write, more commands, and find a tag. To get started, tap the gray text that says no reader, tap to select a reader. On this screen, it shows that no devices are available and to ensure your device is on and the blue LED is flashing. It also says to tap the plus button to show the accessory dialog and explains that your device will populate on the list after a few seconds. Click the plus sign in the top right corner and wait a few seconds for your reader to populate. This may take up to 10 seconds. When your reader appears, click on it. Your reader is now connected. Now we are ready to inventory tags, read or write tags, or find a tag. Today we are going to use the inventory function to take inventory of all the RFID tags around us. Click Inventory. As you can see on the screen, it is a tag counter screen. There are a few different available functions we can do on this screen. We can change the power of our reader from 4 dBm up to 29 dBm. We can choose to filter what we read by clicking the filter text in the blue bar on the top right side. We can hide or show details. And we can scan or clear. There are two ways to read tags on this screen. Either to hold down the trigger button on the reader, or click the blue scan button on the bottom of the screen. If you choose to hold down the trigger button, you can move the reader around and control how long the reader is reading in the area. The tag's EPC numbers will populate under Transponder Identifier. If you choose the Scan button, the reader will scan the area for a couple of seconds and then display the tag's EPC number under Transponder Identifier. As you can see with this app, the number of unique tags will display at the top, and the number of times each unique EPC number has been read will display to the right of the individual EPC number. When you leave this screen, 
you have an option to either clear all data or clear screen and save data. This will be up to you whether you want to save the data or delete it. Thanks for watching this video about getting started with the TSL 1128. For more information on RFID and how it's being used all over the world, check out our blog, our RFID resources page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any questions at all, please send us an email or give us a call.